we call LCH a lot of different forms, and my personal opinion is that um, it's not one disease. Although we look through the microscope, and what we see is that there are dendritic cells involved, and there are other cells, T cells, and whatever, but I really believe that there are different forms. We know of the adults, where a lot of the adult patients with LCH have lung disease. We know that there are a lot of patients, and they are between 3 and 20 or 5 and 15, who have bone lesions or skin lesions. And then we have the infants who have visceral involvement, who have you know disease in the bone marrow, in the liver, or in the lung, and they are really the worst cases. And for me, that's very close to mild leukemia. It's, it's the worst, and there we still have the patients who do not do so well. So again, looking through the microscope, you all see the same abnormality, but I believe that um, there is somewhere they come from different ways and what you see is the final solution, but I really believe that there is something different there. But that's what we would like to find out in the coming years, maybe in the next 20 years, Jen. Mm -hmm. So, bone lesions, I'm just going over a few of the, of the organs and you know it can be separate, it can be involved everywhere. You know, you cannot have in 40% of the patients who have bone lesions have it in their skull. And you cannot have it in your mandible, you can't have floating teeth, you cannot have it in your spine, you can have a collapse there, you cannot have it in your, your upper arm or your leg. So it can be every bone, but 40% it's in the skull. And of course the symptoms are very much related to where the lesion is. You can imagine when you have it in your jaws and your teeth are floating, then that's, those are the problems. We often have soft swelling, soft tissue swelling, we have pain, but sometimes there are lesions and you don't even know that they are there, so they just pop up. Skin. This is very typical, the brownies, physicals, it can be behind the ears, or it can be in the groins, or um, sometimes it's up the upper head and then it looks like eczema, and um, you know when it doesn't react, you sometimes have to take a biopsy and make a diagnosis of LCH. Liver can be involved, and in a certain point you can enlargement, and then the liver starts to dysfunctionate, and in the end it can be completely fibrotic. So um, everything is there, and you know I go over it from light LCH to severe LCH just to give you an overview. It can be in your lungs, and again we see that more in adults. Um, you can get big bullet, and the interesting part is here that. The disease that you see in the adults, you can also see in young children, but because of the elasticity of the lungs of children, they can improve, but in adults, this is often an end product. So sometimes we see adults who, who need oxygen because their lungs are not, they are fibrotic, they are not that flexible anymore. It can be in your bone marrow, and it can be in your central nervous system, and I'm sure that um, Dr. Whitlock will talk, talk more about it when you have it in your central nervous system. Mm -hmm. I think in the last 10, 15 years, we got to know more and more about the central nervous system disease, but again, there are lots of questions, and it's sometimes very disabling, because sometimes you have a patient who had LCH who was 2 or 3 years old, and then 10 years later, he gets abnormalities in his, in his brain, and... Um, I have a thought about it, but we still do not really know what's happening because you cannot take tissue from the brain that easy, so we don't really know what's going on. Most of the biopsies of the tissue that we need for research are either from bone or for skin because those organs are easier to approach. And I do understand, you know, when I get a diagnosis, when I get a patient from another hospital and they take a tiny little piece of skin and the disease is the diagnosis can be made well you don't go in there again to get to get tissue but tissue is the, the, the uh, what we need for doing research because we need affected tissue what is different with affected LCH tissue compared with non-affected tissue of the same patient so you can make differences you can find but that has been very difficult I'm going to talk a little bit about treatment and um, over the years, I learned as well. In the beginning, I was probably more aggressive than I am now. When you have only bone lesions or only skin lesions, I'm probably more conservative nowadays. Step back and see what's happening, because sometimes it may regress spontaneously. And if that happens, that makes you know life a lot easier. You don't have to start with corticosteroids or, you know, at some point, sometimes you do need chemotherapy. But if it's not necessary, wonderful. So there are new drugs there. I am in favor of biphosphonates, not that long, but that's because some of the things that we found in the research is that the LCH in the bone is due to the activation of certain cells. 
and biphosphonates is really a rationale to treat bone disease because um, what you have is like there are certain cells and let's call them Pac-Man in the disease you know what you can so do on a computer game there are cells here called osteoclasts and they eat away bone in normal life there's a balance between cells that make bone and that eat bone because we all you know bone is, is, is going away and it's happening so for example when you break your leg at a certain point it's healing again so there's a balance but in LCH there is there is more eating bone than making bone so that's why you get the holes in your bones well biphosphonate is a drug that is targeting to those active those eating cells so it makes a lot of sense but again I have to say, with the pain in my heart, it doesn't work always. There are, you know, in the, let's say, the 10 patients I know that has been treated, it, it responded to seven, but three, they didn't respond. So there's something else going on as well, and we don't know yet. In skin, again, sometimes it may regress. I do think that, especially, and Dr. Barksman will talk about it, in the infants, we have seen it often in boys, and in the past, we always felt that it was very benign, that it can, uh, that it uh, disappeared, but now we know, um, um, Thanks to Dr. Weinsman and our colleagues that uh, some of those patients do recur, does recur, and also to other organs, so they should be followed quite closely. Again, with the treatment, I would be conservative. Topical steroids would be my first treatment option. We talked a little bit about the protocols. LCA3 is now running, and I think that we learned a lot with collaboration. You know, it's interesting that when you go to an histocy society meeting, there are 80, 90 people from 26, 27 countries. When you work together, you <coughs> can do a lot because, you know, every trial now has about 300 or 400 pages from all around the world. And it's so good to see that we are not thinking nationally. No, we think globally. If the patient is in South America or in Asia or North America or Europe, you know, we want to help. And um, I think this has been wonderful. And the, the basis actually came from Vienna. Dr. Gattner has been sort of the, 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 the grandfather of the trials in LCH and has been the chair of the, of the, the, the protocols. And I think we learned a lot. We're not there yet, but we learned a lot. So LCH3 is currently coming, is, is running for more than four or five years. And um, the History Seed Society Board is thinking about LCH4. And I will be eager to see what will happen. There are some newer treatment protocols. We are now also talking about patients who do not respond to frontline therapy. 2CDA with RSC, there's a salvage protocol. So what does this mean? If your patient has LCH and it is so severe that it needs chemotherapy, it goes into LCH3. If it doesn't work, at least we have another protocol. So it's not the end of the story. Then you go to a salvage protocol. Also, through uh, the History Society, it's a combination of 2CDA and ROC. There are people working on antibodies. As I showed you in the beginning, lung ulcer histiocytosis, those cells are positive for CD1A. So it makes a lot of sense if you can make a drug that is focusing against only those CD1A positive cells. People in Baltimore with Dr. RCC are working on that. And then there are newer protocols for the very severe who do not respond to frontline therapy, who do not respond to salvage. You can do either stem cell transplantation, I will talk about it a little bit later tomorrow. There are patients who have lung transplant or liver transplant because I showed you some pictures. You can imagine at some point if your lung or your liver is completely fibrotic and this not functioning, that a transplant of lung or liver is necessary. And there are people who have a lung or a liver transplant who are now 10 or 15 years out there and do extremely well.